Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in AITS Select Series and I have brought forward to you an often ignored concept and in some textbooks it is not even mentioned but it's a very important concept of JE Mains and JE Advanced and slightly uh, confusing for some students so, so we'll try to throw light upon this and that's a concept of beta minus dk and its energy analysis okay so we'll take up a problem that has appeared in one of the AITS in the past and try to elaborate more on that and also take up six not one six practice problems at the end whose solutions i'll be also posting in the upcoming videos so that this concept is completely clear especially for the students who are going to appear for the exams in the coming weeks okay right so here we move forward so for those who want to give it a fair try, try to actually pause the video here, read the question on your own. This is the JE advanced numerical question model. So your answer should be supposedly written up till maybe two or three decimal places. So have a go on your own. And I'm going forward with the formal wording, okay? Neon 23 undergoes a beta minus decay and the equation for the dk is given and it produces a sodium isotope atomic mass of uh, neon and sodium are respectively these numbers right you could see the significant digits that he has mentioned in the particular number mass of electron that is being released beta minus particle is nothing but an electron is uh, given in mev by c square units okay so the maximum kinetic energy of the beta minus particle that is emitted is how much and this u which is the standard atomic mass unit has been mentioned it's a conversion factor of 931.5 mev by c square with this information you're supposed to answer this question to the best possible extent okay so we'll try to take up some of the concepts involved and uh, we will start off with uh, uh, understanding this concept from the excerpts of Hetsi Verma volume two book. So I've just taken out one page from that equation 46.9, where he discusses in a very beautiful fashion, simple language fashion of beta minus dk. Okay, so if any general X parent nucleus uh, decays into a daughter nucleus via a beta minus dk, we should be knowing that it's a three particle decay, not two particles, it's a three particle decay. And the third particle has been discovered as the anti-neutrino. Okay, so the idea lies in the fact that there are uh, angular momentum and spin angular momentum conservations, which leads to the third particle production. Okay, so much on that in a later video somewhere, right? So you have to believe that there are three particles that are going to be emitted at this point in this video. So when you write the Q value, right, or the energy of the uh, constraint Constituents. Initial constituent is the parent. Okay, so he has written, can carefully observe mass of AXZ that you have taken minus ZME into C square. So whenever you are supposed to write the Q value, you have to take the subtraction of the masses of reactants and products. And always they are supposedly nuclear masses. Okay, but since most of the times we are provided with atomic masses because they are easier to measure, uh, he uh, is taking the atomic mass here and removing the mass of electrons in an AXZ if with its atomic mass represented like this how many mass of electrons would be there Z electrons is there so he's removing them from the parent similarly he does it with the uh, daughter and the product new uh, that is formed and all these M of numbers are actually the atomic mass number, atomic mass uh, values. And that's why the mass number of electrons have been subtracted. So when you subtract the value of this and uh, the uh, product that is particularly formed, you end up getting mass of AXZ minus mass of this, and you'll not end up getting this one in the final expression. Okay, so it may be noted that the rest mass energy of the electron, which is also actually released, created is not explicitly subtracted in the final equation. Okay, all this he has not mentioned that is going to happen because when you subtract the values, uh, it actually gets cancelled. Okay, so the caution I would like to uh, talk about here is whenever this uh, particular equation is given, right, uh, x give rise to y plus beta plus neutrino, we should not directly subtract these numbers. So the tendency for the students is to take mass of x minus mass of y minus mass of beta. Anyway, neutrino's mass is negligible. It's not zero, but it's negligible in this uh, order. So a lot of students write this subtraction. 
okay so they take this as the q value which leads to a mistake the reason is these subtractions are supposed to be taken if these are nuclear masses but since the information given in most questions is atomic masses you can't directly do this you could see the examiner trying to lead you into committing a mistake by giving the three masses here even electron and if you include this you will end up getting a wrong answer okay so the cancellation of this m beta doesn't happen when changing from nuclear masses to atomic masses this cancellation will not happen but most of the times we we don't do this right whenever any other reactions are given not beta decays but other reactions are given we directly take the atomic masses and subtract right we don't care uh, so much about the addition and subtraction of the electrons why is that so so let's try to investigate before solving the actual problem and then the six practice problems uh, when does this generally happen when can you take this as a thumb rule when you are solving in exams okay let's say for a reaction a plus b give rise to c plus d in a nuclear uh, situation the q value by definition is mass of reactants minus mass of products into c square we know this where masses in the equation are actually nuclear masses if this is a nuclear reaction the participant masses in this equation should be nuclear masses okay then atomic masses can be substituted here instead of nuclear masses by adding and subtracting electrons and those addition and subtraction of electrons get cancelled actually if the a b c d themselves don't have electrons as participants that means if a and b are nuclei and c and d are nuclei and none of these are actually electrons or beta particles then only this cancellation effect is okay that's why most of our nuclear reactions whether we take nuclear mass or whether we take atomic mass in this substitution it won't matter but in case when any of these uh, on the reactant or the product side are actually electron or positron then this uh, trouble arises and that gives a nice recipe for je people to fox the students or to make students commit silly error okay so hence this doesn't work where participants themselves whether it is on the reaction side or on the product side are electronic mass electronic means you can take even positron so what are the cases where you shouldn't apply it directly direct subtraction but um, you should be careful it is in in our syllabus uh, je advanced syllabus beta plus beta minus and electron capture these are the three situations where you end up having uh, this trouble okay so keeping that trouble in mind let's now try to solve the problem okay so um if i take the energy distribution curve or spectrum of the beta minus decay so can you see on the right side of the screen this is the beta minus energy distribution curve what it tells you is the number of uh, electrons the, the fraction of electrons which are coming with different different kinetic energies okay why is that so because there are three particles and the q value whatever is the uh, supposed to be shared between all of these or among all of these this na would be a very heavy mass as compared to these two therefore all the q value mostly is shared between these two and since it is shared actually between these two these electrons actually don't come with one single energy unlike in the case of alpha d case okay so the energy being shared so there are probability of electron having very low energies and also electron having very high energy and that's what this distribution curve tries to tell us okay just like our maxwellian distribution tells us in an ideal gas all molecules don't have same speed ideal gas you remember maxwellian distribution this distribution tells us that if you have a lump or a big material of neon there are many neon nuclei inside decaying each decay won't be identical it, it each decay will spit out an electron with different possible kinetic energies okay and in one of the special case the maximum kinetic energy is that one where the neutrino will not take up any of the share so maximum ke of this will happen when neutrino doesn't take any share and that itself is the q value because q value is the total ke na is not a candidate it is disqualified because of its heavy mass and q usually is getting distributed between these two and ke max of this electron happens when neutrino or anti neutrino i should have said doesn't participate in the sharing okay and that's why the answer itself in this problem is q value so there are two aspects in this problem you should know how to calculate q value and also the logic of why is that q value 
value called the maximum kinetic energy of the beta minus. And then comes the substitution. I, you could see I didn't use the mass of electron in this for all the explanation I gave in the previous slide. Okay, so once you do this calculation, you'll get this. And if you involve electrons mass, you'll get a wrong answer in one of the decimal places. Okay, now if you carefully observe on the right side before going to the six practice problems, I will just want to ask one question here. Why different gra graphs for plus and minus decay? So you see any standard textbooks for the distribution of energies, the beta minus and beta plus decays, even though they end up at same Q value, right? And that means they, they all will end up at some position. Q value also could be different, but yeah, it, they end up somewhere here. But the Y intercepts in both the cases won't be same why they are two different graphs. Okay, so also one more question that is not answered in the textbooks usually. So shall we do a video on this? Are you uh, interested in it? Please do comment in the comment section with a yes. We, you, if, you, if there are sufficient number of yeses, then I'll take up a video on this one in resolved series. Okay, and let's start with the practice problems one after another. Most of them are in the quickies section. Okay, so First one is on the conceptual uh, situations of beta minus decay. So how well you understand beta minus decay theoretically so that you are ready for your GE advanced examination. So um, which of the following are correct? So one or more than one correct answer. So comment your answer below along with the question number. Let's say question number is 38 here and also with the timestamp of this particular video and uh, comment all the six keys in one uh, comment so that I can reply to them by going through your comments. Okay, so this is the first one. Second one is the comparative question on beta minus and plus decays. Okay, there's always a confusion uh, between how uh, the beta minus and beta plus theory should be understood. Okay, so this one resolves that confusion. Okay, so try to go through each and every statement carefully read and then try to opt for the correct options, true options. Okay, again, comment your answer with the question number 21 and the timestamp at this point in the video. Timestamps are necessary so that I can easily maneuver and go to that particular question when I am watching the video on my own. Okay, next one is how different is free neutron decay? Okay, so this is something that students generally commit mistakes with. So if there is a free neutron can first of all decay. If it does, how different it is from the beta decay that we are discussing in the previous slides. Okay, also you should know the properties of some anti neutrinos. So four options again, mark the correct ones more than one may be correct. Okay, so waiting for your comment below. Next one, important comparison between alpha and beta decays. Again, it's about the energy distribution uh, spectrum graph that we have drawn for beta. If I try to draw a similar graph for alpha, how does it compare? A very important question for your JE advanced. Okay. And another one, this is about the uh, beta ray spectrum graph that I have drawn, right? So a numerical question on that. What can be asked and how can a JE manipulate a question uh, for that particular uh, situation? So this is also an interesting question, a very simple one. It's all going to be answered in the quickies. So one or two minute uh, solutions you will have and uh, that would uh, revise your concept on these decays properly, okay? And last one um, is the comparison between beta plus and electron capture. A lot of people think that electron capture is just an alternative way of decay for a beta plus. Is that true? If it is, then why? And is it not true? And if so, what are the differences between the two is explored in this simple theoretical question. I'll be waiting for your answer in the comment section. Please don't forget the timestamp and the question number. I'll definitely reply. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed all these six questions. It's almost like we are doing the postmortem of all these beta minus and beta plus and also alpha D case. And also I'll try to come up with more nuclear physics questions, especially keeping in mind that JE advanced aspirants are looking for that. Okay, so if you want to check out the rest of the series, apart from AIT select series, you have uh, Pathfinder, Olympiad level questions, and then resolved series. And I, I didn't write all the series. You just need to go through the uh, video section, playlist section, just try to explore. If you're new, I have already, by this point of recording this video, 200 plus videos have been done. So please do check them out. And each and every video, I do believe will add on to 
whatever physics that you know okay so please do like share and subscribe to this particular channel keep motivating me so that i can come up with the quality content that i have already produced till now okay thank you for staying this long and see you in the next video